is there room for free will in this uh, in a, in in this view of the universe is generating novelty and getting greater and greater assembly uh, structures built, Sarah? Yes. Okay. Done. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Why? What's the source of free will in this? Well, so I think it depends on what you mean by free will. Um, but yeah, well, please. There's a lot. <laughs> I think I think what I'm interested in, as far as the ph ph phenomena of free will, is uh, do we have individual autonomy and agency? And you know, when I do things, is it really me or is it my atoms that did it? Um, and that's the part that's interesting to me. I guess there's also the determinism versus randomness part. Um, but the way I think about it is like each of us are like a thread or like an, you know, assembly space through, you know, this, this giant possibility space. And it's like, we're moving on our own trajectory through that space. And that is defined by our history. So we're sort of causally contingent on our past, but also because of the sort of intersection of, novelty generation it's not completely predetermined by the past and so so then you have the causal control of the determinism part that you are your causal history and there's some determinism from that past but there's also room for creativity and i think it's actually necessary that something like free will exists if the universe is going to be as creative as possible because if i were a uh, all intelligent being inventing a universe and I wanted it to have maximal number of interesting things happen. Again, we should come up with the metric of interesting, um, but Assembly. generating, yes, I know, uh, generating, um, you know, m maximal possibilities, then I would want the agents to have free will because it means that they're more individual. Like they are like each entity actually is a different causal force in the universe. And it's intrinsic and local property of that system. There's a greater number of distributed agents. Like, are you always creating more and more individuality? Kind of. I, I would say you're creating more causal power, but. So our, causal power, the, the word consciousness, is, is is the causal power somehow correlated with consciousness? I mean, that, that's why I have this conception of consciousness being related to imagination, because the more that we can imagine can happen and the more counterfactual possibilities you have in mind, the more you can actually implement. And somehow free will is also at the intersection of the counterfactual becoming the actual. Um, so can, can you elaborate on that a little bit, that consciousness is imagination? I don't know exactly how to articulate it, and I'm sure people will take you know, aim at certain things I'm saying, but I think the language is really imprecise. So I'm not the yeah. best way it's to. Really it's really interesting. Like what is imagination and what is it, uh, what role does it play in the human experience, in, in experience of any yes, agent? Yes, I love imagination. I think it's like the most amazing uh, thing we do. But I guess one way I would think about it is we talked about the transition to life being the universe acquiring memory. And life does something really interesting as you think about biology generally. It remembers states of the past to adapt to things that happen in the future. So, so the longer life has evolved on this planet, the deeper that past is, the more memory we have, the more kinds of organisms and things. But what human level intelligence has done is quite different. It's not just that we remember states that the universe has existed in before, it's that we can imagine ones that have never existed and we can actually make them come into existence. And I think that's the most unique feature about the transition to whatever we are from what life on this planet has been doing for the last 4 billion years. And I, I, think, and I think it's deeply related to the phenomena we call consciousness. Yeah, I was going to, I mean, just agree with that. I think that consciousness is the ability to generate those counterfactuals. Now, whether you can say, you know, are there degrees of consciousness? I mean, and I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, panpsychists, but electrons don't have counterfactuals, although they do have some kind of, they are able to search a space and pathways. But, but I think that there is a very concrete or <laughs> concrete. There's a very specific property that humans have, and I'm and I don't know if it's unique to humans. I mean, maybe dogs can do it, and 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 birds can do it, right? And where they are basically solving a problem because uh, consciousness was invented, or, or this abstraction was invented by evolution for the for a specific reason. Um, and so, look, the one of the reasons why I came to the conclusion that time was fundamental was actually because Sarah and I had completely different 
the most heated debate on Skype chat ever. No, no, no. no we had to, I was <laughs> and which to, topic? No, I, no, it goes back yeah. to the free will thing. So I, I think that, although I've changed my view a bit because there's some really interesting physicists out there who talks about how the measurement problem in, in, in Newtonian space, but I don't want to go there just now because I think I'll mess it up, but briefly... Um, I could not see how the universe, how we could have free will. And the, I mean, this is really boring because like this is like this is a well-trodden path. But I'll, but it's not so boring. I suppose it's kind of we just want to be precise. If the universe is deterministic, how can we have free will, right? So uh, Sarah is a physicist. I think she believe not believe can show that the, the most of the laws we have are deterministic to some degree. Mm-hmm. Quantum mechanics onto Newtonian stuff. And yet there's Sarah telling me she believes in free will. And I'm like, your, the, your belief system is broken here, right? Because you, you're you demanding free will in a deterministic universe. And and then I re- realized that I, I agreed with her that I do think that free will is a thing because we are able to search for novelty. And then that's where I came to the conclusion that time, the universe is expanding in terms of novelty and it goes back to that Dan Dennett essay that we're talking about the the free will inflation, yeah. free will. So you are you have so the past, it did not exist in the past. The past exists in the present. What I mean is like you are the there was no past. There is only present. <laughs> so that means you are the sum total of everything that occurs in the past is is manifestly here in the present. Yeah, yeah. And then you have this little echo state in your consciousness because you're able to. You're able to imagine something without actualization, but the fact you imagine it, that occurs in electrons and potassium ion flows in your neural network, in your brain. Maybe so, consciousness is just the present. <laughs> so so somehow you imagine that, and then by imagining, oh, that's good, yeah, um, I'm going to make a robot to do this thing and program it, and then you physically then go and do it. So that yeah, then changes it, the future. Sorry. What's imagination? Does it require the past? Does it require the future? Does it require memory? Does it... Yeah, so or, imagination... I, I does can, it only exist in the moment? So imagination is... Well, ooh, yeah, probably it's an instantaneous readout of what's going on. You can maybe... Your some, your subconscious brain has been generating all the, all the bits for it. But no, imagination occurs when you... In your game engine, you you remember the past and you integrate sensory the present and you try and work out what you want to do in the future, and then you go and make that happen. So the, the imagination is this. It's like imagine asking what imagination is about. Asking what surfing is. You, you can see you can surfboard surfer wave coming in when you're on that wave and you're surfing. That's where the imagination is. I think I think imagination is just accessing things that aren't the present moment in the present moment. So like I can I'm sitting here and I'm looking at the table and I can imagine the river and things or whatever it was. And so it seems to be that it's like it's our ability to access things that aren't present. But so conjure up worlds, some of them might be akin to something that happened to you recently. So right, but they don't ha- they don't have to be things that actually happened in right. your past. And I think this gets back to assembly theory. Like the way I would think about imagination from an assembly theoretic standpoint is I'm a giant causal graph. Um, and I exist in a present moment as a particular configuration of Sarah. And but there's a a lot of uh I carry a lot of evolutionary baggage. I have that whole causal history and I can access parts of it. Now, when you talk about getting to something as complex as us, having as large an assembly space as us, there's ways of, like, there's a lot of things in that causal graph that have ever actually never existed in the past history of the universe, because, like, the universe got big enough to contain the three of us in this room (laughs) in time, but not all the features of each one of us individually have come into existence as physical objects we would recognize as individual objects. This goes back to your point that we actually have to explain why why things actually even look like objects and aren't just a smear of mess. Um, and just on the, the free will and physics thing, when you were talking, I, was, I, I just want to bring this up because I think it's a really interesting viewpoint that Nicholas Jizen has that um, you know, like we want to use the laws of physics and then say you can't have free will. And his point is you have to have free will in order to even choose to set up an experiment to test the laws of physics. So in some sense, free will should be more fundamental than physics is to because to even do science, there's some assumption that the agents 
have free will. And I always thought it was really perplexing that, um, you know, physics wants to remove agency because the idea that I could do an experiment here on this part of Earth and then I can move somewhere else and prepare an identically, you know, identically prepared experiment, run an experiment again, seems to imply something about the structure of our universe that is not encoded in the laws that we're testing in those experiments. So this kind of dream of physics that you can do multiple experiments, different locations, and then validate each other, um, you're saying that's uh, that's an illusion? No, that- I'm saying that requires decision-making and free will to be a real thing, I think. Like, I think that I think the fact that we can do science is not arbitrary. And I think people, you know, the standard canon in physics would be, well, you could trace all of that back to the initial condition of the universe. But the, the whole point of science is I can imagine doing the experiment and I can do it. And then I can do it again and again and again all but, over the planet. And the, to you, imagination is somehow fundamentally generative of novelty. Yes. So it's not like the universe could have predicted the things you imagined. Imagination, super. so coming back to novelty, I think novelty can exist outside of imagination, but it supercharges it. It's another transition, I think. Mm. I mean, I would say... I mean, this may be a boring statement, but I would say I'm the sure fact there are, sorry? I'm not sure. It's a hard, these are hard questions. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the fact that objects exist is yet another proof that that time is fundamental and novelty exists, right? Because I think, again, if you ask a physicist to write down in their infinite Bible of the universe, let's call it the Bible, the, the, the Mac, you know. Ma- book? Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> that I mean, book I mean, that we're adding math- The mathematical universe, whether you're Max Tegmark or I Sean Carroll kind of or Frank Wilczek. <laughs> or, or or Stephen Wolfram, okay? Yeah, uh, I like that book. Yeah, I love it too. It's lots of pretty pictures. It's really interesting that they they cope with the enormity of the universe by saying, "Well, it's all there, mathematics. It all exists, right?" And and I would say that that's why I'm excited about the future of the universe because it it although it is somehow dependent upon the past, it is not constrained just by the past. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of mad. Yeah, that's what free will is. It's not constrained by the past. It's dependent on the past. This moment, it's not just dependent. This moment is the past, and yet it has the capacity to generate a totally unpredictable future. I mean, the other thing I would say that's super important for human beings, right? Human beings have actually very little causal control in the future. I realized this the other week. Oh, the immediate future, you mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what happened? So this is what I think it is. The way, <laughs> by reinterpreting your past, I mean, talk about from a kind of cognitive, psychological cognitive point of view, by reinterpreting your past in your current mind, you can actually help you shape your future again. So, you, But right. you, you have much more freedom to interpret your past to act in the present, mm-hmm. to change your future than you do to change your future. I may sound weird. So I'm saying to everybody, imagine your past, think about your past, reinterpret your past in the nicest way you can, then imagine what you can do next, or imagine your past in a more negative way and what you do next. And look at those two counterfactuals. They're different. Yeah, it's fast. I mean, Daniel Kahneman talks about this, that most of our life is lived in our memories. And it's okay. interesting because you can essentially in imagination choose the life you live mm-hmm. so maybe free will exists in imagination choices are made in your imagination and that results in you basically able to control how the future unrolls because you're like imagining like reinterpreting constantly the things that happen to you Exactly. So you, the, if you want to increase your amount of free will, those people that have most—I don't think everyone has equal amounts of agency because of uh, because of our sad sad constraints, whether whether you know happenstance, health, uh, economic, born in, born in a certain place, right? But you're those of us that have the ability to go back and reinterpret our past and 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 use that to change the future are the ones that ex- exert most agency in the present. And I, 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 want to, I want to achieve higher degrees of agency and enable everyone else to do that as well, to have more fun in the universe. Then we'll hit that peak, no, the maximum no, fun point. I don't think there's ever going to be a maximum yeah. pop, I think it's, the wonderful thing about the future is there's always going to be more fun. <laughs>